Once upon a time, there was a young businessman, Oleg Zubkov, who 25 years ago started building his first private zoo, Skaska Fairy Tale, in Crimea Yalta. The project turned out to be successful, and 10 years later, he decided to build a lion safari park named Daigon. At the time when the park was open, there were about 50 lions living in the savanna that was surrounded by a metal fence. Tourists walked through the park along the bridges elevated three meters above the ground and thus they could observe the life of the lions as if they were living in the African savanna. Oleg had a favorite lion, Lord, who had lived in the Skoska Zoo for many years. He, along with the lioness Cleopatra, gave birth to many cubs. Oleg always communicated with Lord through the bars of his cage and never face to face in the savannah. When the lions were released into the savannah, they enjoyed living the life of lions, created prides, chose a leader, i.e. alpha male, gave birth to their offspring, and although it did not happen very often, they could even kill an opponent in a fight. No one, not even maintenance personnel, nor the owner of the park, Oleg Zubkov, entered the territory of the savannah. Perhaps it could have continued like this, had not an incident occurred in the first year of the park's operation. From the beginning, the lion lord became an alpha male, the leader of all the prides. At the age of 15 years, he was not a very powerful lion but he was a wise leader, with charisma and had strength to resist a group of young lions. Once these young lions, led by true brother assassins, managed to injure him very badly, as they fought dishonestly, attacking altogether, and they wounded his abdominal cavity, so Lord received a grave wound. At the time, not a single veterinarian, or even the owner of the park, Oleg, dared to enter the savannah, and assist a lion among dozens of other lions. The wounded leader was dying. He was lying there and clouds of flies were flying above him. He started to fade and was saying goodbye to life and the other lions sat around him waiting for what would happen next. Oleg says, I felt very sad at heart and I couldn't bear it. I don't remember what came to me then but I opened the gate and went to say goodbye to this lion. My feelings were very strong. I think I was on the verge of madness. Well, it is not allowed to enter the lion's cage like that, but I had an internal call. But a miracle happened. The lions did not attack him. They saw a man who was probably the most important here because he let them out and whom many of them saw in the Yalta Zoo, as well as the moment they arrived at the lion park, Taigan, and who often walked on the bridges. The lions saw this man approach the dying leader, and they allowed him to come to Lord. Oleg says, Lord was groaning, but when I approached him and patted him on the head, he instantly began to tell me what had happened, but of course, in the lion's language. It sounded like this. Growl, growl, growl. I understood that several mischievous young males attacked him altogether and fought dishonestly. He fought back, defending his leadership and did his best. I bent down, raised his hind leg, and to my horror, saw that his intestinal cavity was open and visible and it had had a great separation that the lion could not lick by himself, so the inflammatory process had already started. I realized that if I did not help him in time, his days would be numbered. I told him that everything would be fine, and that I would help him recover, 
So I asked my employees to bring me medical supplies we had at the time. These were streptocide, a dilute solution of dimethoxide, and hydrogen peroxide. I started treating the wound. They were already fly eggs. All this was quickly eliminated by the solution and by strep powder. Some time has passed, quite a bit, and Lord tried to get up. Not immediately, but he succeeded, pulling on his hind legs, overcoming pain. He went with Oleg along the hills of the safari. All the lions and lionesses were in shock. A man approached the dying leader, helped him, and lifted him up on his legs. All the lions swore allegiance to the leader, demonstrating their humility. And even the wicked young lions were depressed, nodding and sitting down. Some lions were growling in disgust at those moments. Oleg snuggled up to Lord, but none of the lions dared throw himself on two leaders, a man and a lion. Oleg says, I don't know what the lions were thinking then, but a miracle happened. We went around the entire savanna with Lord and went up the hill to take some pictures. At the time, I was not wearing a uniform. I was dressed in a white shirt and civilian colored trousers. Lord was very grateful for the help. Lions have a very strong immune system, but sometimes when the wounds are deep and large, they lack their own strength to lick them and overcome these diseases. From that day on, I felt great strength and confidence in myself. I felt the support of the leader and the recognition of all the lions in the savanna. From that day, I began visiting Lord almost daily, and I soon realized that the lions trusted me and recognized me as if I were their leader. The first years in the park, Lord was the alpha male of all prides and enjoyed great authority among lions, although he did not possess the strength of the current leader, Chuk. He did not have such large legs, but he had a true lion character, and of course he fought until his last days, defending his position. Three years later, Lord died, but today many of his children live in the savanna and continue his lineage. Of course, the leaders will change, and Chuk will not forever be the leader of the savanna. He will be the leader as long as he can demonstrate his superiority over the other lions. Currently, not only does Oleg enter the savanna, but his assistants also accompany him, as well as veterinarians who treat lions right in the park. The lions stop killing each other, and there are no more such accidents in the park. Oleg feeds the weak and helps newcomers get used to the savanna and isolates the aggressors. The two brother assassins were taken out of the savanna and sentenced to life in a big open-air cage. They were placed there with their lionesses and were living there until they were sent to another zoo. These days, Oleg also gives excursions into the lion's savanna. Everyone can drive with him to the safari park in an electric excursion car, without grills, without windows or doors. And in the savanna, it is allowed to pet the lions, and everyone can take selfies with them. This is a unique tourist offering. Nobody in the world does anything like that.